50 so you can get your notes so you jot down major points because in the exam it is quite difficult for you not to see a question that have to do with a uh, described or method involving the generation of a particular kind of uh, uh, forms of energy how to generate electricity with it and also um, majorly the advantage and disadvantage of some of these major energy resources so energy resource and the generation of electricity so first and foremost there are two major types of energy we have the renewable energy and non-renewable energy now renewable energy can be replaced as quickly as they are used and renewable energy include biofuel which can include earth bioets and all biogas and wood uh, these are um, source of energy that can be produced from plant geothermal power from um, plate tectonic activities hydroelectric power from water tidal power wave power solar powers and wind power so we're going to be looking at these individual major electricity uh, and forms of energy how they generate electricity their individual advantage and disadvantage now why non-renewable energy are used faster than they can be replaced now uh, in the part, part one of this um, chapter as we started treating this chapter two we explain how um, fossil fuel are formed and you can see that it is formed over millions of years so they are non-renewable energy because it is used faster than it can be replaced and examples are the fossil fuels fossil fuels are oil we have your oil your oil your um, coal and natural gas these are the three types of fossil fuels now I've seen a uh, an exam question where they ask list the types of fussy fuel so yeah it's just coal uh, oil and uh, natural gas nuclear power and using uranium these are non-renewable energy so quickly and uh, the demand for energy is increasing worldwide and why is it that the demand for energy is increasing now obviously there is increase in the world population so as world population increase you expect the use for energy to also increase now, uh, due to increase in world population, there has also been, it has led to increase in industrialization and urbanization. So, um, due to growth of towns and cities, uh, more energy is needed to run modern industrial estates. And you need a whole lot of energy to run uh, an industrialized um, um, factories. And because the world population has increased, there is more demand for product so higher increase in terms of uh, production from industries and thereby result in higher use of energy now improvement in the standard of living and expectation now if the standard of living of an individual improve then they tend to consume more energy uh, for example um, like most developing economy you find out that, that if energy if um, the standard of living of a particular family increase uh, most of them will begin to get things like uh, a generator to generate their own personal electricity because um, the power of failure in the country uh, is quite high generator and this will now make use of a uh, high amount of fossil fuels uh, things like they'll begin to get in get their own personal cars family cars and some family can get more than one and all these help to increase the use of energy so you find that an increase in population increase in industrialization and urbanization improvement in standard of living and expectation increase energy consumption now how energy sources are used to generate electricity how can you generate electricity from different energy sources now there are two things you need to know that anytime you are asked uh, once you're able to remember these two keywords you to a very great extent be able to describe how to generate electricity first a turbine now which is a machine often containing fins that is made to revolve by gas steam or air take note this turbine can be can revolve by gas steam or air it is usually connected to what a generator now what the turbine does is as it rotates its fins it convert it it is able to generate mechanical energy it's able to generate mechanical energy 
mechanical energy now through the rotation of the turbine now what will now follow up is that this mechanical energy generated by the turbine will now be converted to electrical energy using a generator now a generator is a machine that convert mechanical energy into electrical energy so let's let's look at this first fussy fuel and biofuel now because the same method for generation of electricity using Coal, oil, and gas is the same method used to generate electricity using biofuel. Though you need to remember that biofuel is a renewable energy. Now, how is it done? Now, these produce massive, massive, sorry, these produce a, a massive amount of energy during combustion <coughs> that is used to heat water. Now, during combustion, this is a combustion chamber based on this diagram sorry we have a combustion chamber here now so during combustion where you burn it it is it generate high amount of energy and this energy is used the used to steam or to heat water and once that is done the water is converted to steam once the water is converted to steam the steam thereby drives the turbine the steam will drive the turbine the turbine will now help to convert that steam through the driving, the rotating, to mechanical energy, then which the turbine is usually connected to the generator. Then the generator will convert the mechanical energy to electrical energy. Now, from here, you find that a fussy four powered steam engine, um, you have a coal. Once the coal is burned, it's, the, it heats water and the water generates steam. The steam now it's used to rotate the turbine this is a turbine here so the steam will now help to rotate the turbine once the turbine gets rotated it will now generate mechanical energy and this generator here will convert the mechanical energy from this turbine into electrical energy for distribution to houses for use now what are the advantages and disadvantages of fussy fuel you see advantages extraction of fussy fuel provide jobs uh, it provide it is plentiful in some location uh, so thereby it is readily available you can get coal oil and natural gas the technology use is well known and the method of extraction are well practiced however there is a lot of disadvantage attached to the use of fussy fuel and one of those disadvantages it releases carbon dioxide and toxic gas into the atmosphere and um, when it is burnt and extraction could damage the environment so you can also look at the impact of uh, extraction of minerals in chapter one now possibility of oil spill there is high possibility of oil spill during the extraction process and that can uh, damage local areas and also the release of this carbon dioxide and toxic gas into the atmosphere also contributes to climate change and global warming so second let's look at hydroelectric power Hydroelectric power has to do with uh, use of a dam on a river to store water in a reservoir. Now, the advantage, disadvantage of a dam and the structure and how it works will be treated in Chapter 3 when we looked at water and its environment. That Chapter 3. So here, I'm just going to explain how uh, this dam and hydroelectric power is being generated. So first, you construct a dam, use a dam. On the river so this is usually the upstream of a river upstream and this here is the downstream so um, to store water in a reservoir water is released from the reservoir so once water is released from the reservoir uh, then that flows through the turbine rotating it so the water from this reservoir flows down through the penstock and get in contact with the turbine now the turbine will now rotate as a result of the movement of this particular water of, of this water now once that is done the turbine will now generate what mechanical energy now the generator here will help to convert the mechanical energy that is as a result of rotation of this turbine into electrical energy uh, which can now be distributed to houses for use the turbine then activates the generator that generates electricity that that's just it simple now what are the advantage first it does not produce carbon dioxide hydroelectric power does not produce carbon dioxide and if it does not produce carbon dioxide it does not contribute to global warming that 
I call this the multiplier factor. If you remember one, you should be able to relate it to the second. Now, water can be reused, so it can is renewable. It's a renewable form. Now, dam impacts the natural flow of water, and if it impacts the natural flow of water, then it can affect the villages and also the ecosystem within the water, within um, the river course, and um, that can also affect um, things like um, the, the villagers can actually relocate, especially if they are living on the um, downstream location, because it, there is also risk of flooding in case if the dam collapse. Now, nuclear power, which is a non-renewable energy, nuclear power. So uranium is a radioactive element that releases huge amount of energy when it undergoes nuclear fission, that is splitting the atoms. So once you split the atoms, it releases a high amount of energy. Now this energy is used to heat water. The water will now produce steam. The steam will now help to rotate the turbine. The turbine will now generate mechanical energy. The generator will now convert the mechanical energy into electrical energy. Now in this case, you have a cooling chamber that the steam can also condense back to the same water. The water will still be pumped and the same process will continue. We continue. Now, advantage of using uh, uranium uh, or radioactive element is that small amount produces large amount of energy. Small amount produces large amount of energy. Power plants employ lots of people, so it provides job and does not produce carbon dioxide. So it is the only non-renewable form of energy that does not produce carbon dioxide. Take note. It is the only non-renewable form of energy non-renewable form of energy that does not produce carbon dioxide. Now, disadvantage, there is risk of radiation leakage, which can impact on human health and the environment. Waste products cannot be recycled, and usually there is a limited supply of radioactive elements. So geothermal energy, how do we use geothermal energy or geothermal power um, to generate electricity? First, you have cold water is pumped under pressure into a layer of hot rocks. So here you see, we have the injection well, where you pump in water at high pressure into this layer of hot rocks. Now, the first thing is the rock hits the water. The water returns to the surface under pressure and heats. So the water now that is being heated, we now return to the surface through this second pipe here, under what? Pressure and heat. Now the second supply of water using what a heat exchanger so this heat and steam will rise and what will it do now it will help to rotate the turbine then the generator will convert the mechanical energy generated by the turbine into electrical energy then this steam can now still be condensed and pumped back into the hot rock now the steam produced in the second supply moves the turbine thereby generating electricity um, advantage, it does not produce carbon dioxide, it's a renewable form of energy and it has unlimited supply as it uses heat from the earth. Now it's expensive to install, that's one disadvantage, only certain areas have suitable conditions. Next is wind power. So uh, this is quite straightforward. Uh, a wind turbines have shaft or blades that rotate due to wind. So as the wind moves, the sharp or blade rotates. Then it has a gearbox just behind it here. This is the gearbox. It has a gearbox that maximizes the rotation of the shaft in the turbine. Now, brakes slow down or stop the rot rot rotor in um, very windy conditions, preventing damage to the blade. So as the turbine rotates, the, generate, the generator will produce electricity. So simple quite straightforward. Advantage, it does not produce carbon dioxide. It is a renewable energy resource. It does not lead to global warming, whichever, uh, because it doesn't produce carbon dioxide. So it has no relationship with global warming. But the major disadvantage is, for most location, wind power density is quite low for most locations. So you need an area that have a high wind power. Uses a large area for installation and prove Problem exists in variation of power density and duration, so it is usually not reliable. Then that will bring us into solar power. Solar power. 
Now, solar power use photovoltaic cells. Sorry, the animation is not really just coming up well, but you can see it. It uses photovoltaic cells that produce small electric charge when exposed to light. So photovoltaic cells produce small electric charge when exposed to light. You now take note, this does not have to do with anything, doesn't have anything to do with turbine. Now the bank, a bank of cells organized into solar panels produce a significant amount of electricity. Now, what are the advantages? Solar energy is renewable energy resource and there are no fuel costs. It's not harmful to the environment because it does not produce any gas um, that will be a form of pollutant. Solar cells provide electricity in remote locations such as roadside signs and uh, street lights. However, the disadvantage is that solar cells are expensive and inefficient so the cost of their electricity is quite high and solar cells do not work at night so they need a battery to, uh, that will, they will recharge for the process now tidal power tidal power uh, it uses the natural um, rise and fall in the level of water in an area so the natural rise and fall in the level of water in an area when the level drops water is held back by a tidal barrage which is a small dam like what you can see here tidal barrage which is a small dam that releases water back through a turbine so it holds the excess water and releases release the water back through the turbine so as it's releasing it through the turbine the turbine will rotate and um, generate mechanical energy and the generator will now help to convert the mechanical energy into electrical energy now it is a renewable advantage it's a renewable is renewable and fussy fuel free it's low cost to run and it's efficient at low speed. However, disadvantage is expensive to construct, uh, limited locations, and also it is being affected by adverse weather condition. Now we have wave power. How do wave generate electricity? I think uh, also uses turbine and generator, uses the smaller difference in water level that is caused by wind. So wind normally lead to generation of waves in uh, coastal areas so as the swash and um, back swash so you can watch my video on coastal processes in geography to understand this movement of coastal erosion uh, transportation and depositional process now the swash brings the water upstream so and the back swash sorry this is the back swash the back swash will now take it back now this continuous movement of wave current will now lead to rotation of what this turbine and once the turbine rotates it generates mechanical energy the generator will now help to convert the mechanical energy into electrical energy for distribution to houses advantages also is that it's renewable it's environmental friendly it is abundant and widely available almost all countries that share boundary with the coast of our boundary with the coast can actually generate uh, electricity using this wave power and disadvantages is suitable to certain location not all location effects on marine ecosystem it affects marine ecosystem and source of disturbance for onshore vessels and it causes noise pollution so um that's it on uh, energy resource and generation of electricity and also the advantage and disadvantage of these three energy sources so uh, in the next video we are going to try and cover and the part three and the part three have to do with energy demand so uh thank you see you in our next video